Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. Thanks for joining me. This is Morning Prayer for Thursday, August 20th. It's the 12th week after Pentecost, at week 7 in the Psalm Cycle. Add the scripture for this service, Psalms 131 and 132, 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1 to 23. And please join me in singing verse 5 of Psalm 66, part 2, by Isaac Watts, to the tune of New Britain. But God, your name be ever blessed, has set my spirit free, nor turned away my poor request, nor turned your heart from me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, O God, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Alleluia, Psalms 131 and 132. And please recite them with me. Alleluia, O God, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself like a child upon his mother's breast. My soul is content. Let Israel hope in God most high from henceforth and forever. Alleluia, remember David and his hardships, how he swore an oath to you and vowed a vow. Surely I will not come into my house, nor go up to my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyelids, nor slumber to my eyes, until I find a place for you, a dwelling for the mighty God of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. We heard of the ark at Ephrata, and we found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into your tabernacles. We will worship on our knees at your footstool. Rise, O beloved God, into your rest, you in the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, reject not your anointed. You have sworn an oath to David, of the fruit of your body will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon your throne forevermore. For you have chosen Zion, you have desired her for your dwelling. This is my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will abundantly bless her and provide for her. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There I will make the heart of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon him shall his crown flourish. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, O God, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Alleluia. A lesson from the second book of Samuel, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. It was told Joab, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the troops. For the troops heard that day, the king is grieving for his son. The troops stole into the city that day as soldiers steal in, who are ashamed when they flee in battle. The king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, Today you have covered with shame the faces of all your officers who saved your life today, and the lives of your sons and your daughters, and the lives of your wives and your concubines, for love of those who hate you, and for hatred of those who love you. 
You have made it clear today that commanders and officers are nothing to you, for I perceive that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead today, you would be pleased. So go out at once and speak kindly to your servants, for I swear by the Most High, if you do not go, not a man will stay with you this night. And this will be worse for you than any disaster that has come upon you from your youth until now. Then the king got up and he took his seat in the gate. The troops were all told, See, the king is sitting in the gate. And all the troops came before the king. And meanwhile, all the Israelites had fled to, the, had fled to their homes. All the people were disputing throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies and saved us from the hand of the Philistines. And now he has fled out of the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now, therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent this message to the priest Zadok and Abiathar, Say to the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his house? The talk of all Israel has come to the king. You are my kin, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, are you not my bone and my flesh? So may God do to me and more, if you are not the commander of my army from now on, in place of Joab. Amasa swayed the hearts of all the people of Judah as one, and they sent word to the king, Return, both you and all your servants. So the king came back to the Jordan and Judah to Gilgal to meet the king and bring him over the Jordan. Shammai, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite from Baal Hurim, hurried to come down with the people of Judah to meet King David. With him were a thousand people from Benjamin, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, with his fifteen sons and twenty servants, rushed down to the Jordan ahead of the king. While the crossing was taking place to bring over the king's household and to do his pleasure. Shemai, son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan, and he said to the king, May my lord not hold me guilty or remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king not bear it in mind, for your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, see, I have come this day the first of all the house of Joseph to come down to meet my lord the king. Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered, Shall not Shemai be put to death for this, because he cursed Yahweh's anointed? But David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should come today be that you should today become an adversary to me. Shall anyone be put to death in Israel this day? For do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? The king said to Shammai, You shall not die. And the king gave him his oath. Here ends the lesson. And now let us pray for the church and the world. Please respond, hear us, tender God. For the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For Don and Tom and Richard and Joe and Bill, for all of our church leaders, for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For the poor, the hungry, and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For Barack and Joe and John, for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, and for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth, we pray. Hear us, tender God. That God, who has begun this ministry, 
may bring it to fulfillment, we pray. Hear us, tender God. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Bernard and all your saints, let us commend one another and all of our lives to Christ our God, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. We pray, hear us, tender God, together. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. O oh, beloved God, we thank you for all your abundant blessings, salvation and righteousness, and the bread we eat. We shout our joy in your dwelling, and we bless you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alleluia, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.